when Tobago Talk, we listen. Tobago Talks up next. Martin George joins me on the Zoom line. Always a pleasure to touch base with Martin, the chairman of the Tobago Business Chamber. And such a timely discussion because when I saw the cancellation of the Tobago Jazz, uh, my mind ran on you immediately. I know you're a man of, of <laughs> culture, a man, of, a man who wears many caps, but I know you're a cultural man, a man who enjoys great music and obviously the jazz. Let me just say good morning, Martin, and I look forward to our discussion this morning. Welcome. Yeah, hi, good morning to you, Jason, and good morning, Trinidad and Tobago. Martin, let me ask you, because you know I'm also a man very much, uh, much integrated in the entertainment structure and culture of the country. Is Tobago jazz suffering from, I would say, it's, is, is this almost like they're a victim of their own, own ambition? Let's go back to the history of this Tobago jazz. When Clico was involved, uh, clearly, the money was flowing. They brought the likes of Sir Elton John. Uh, they brought the likes of Stevie they, Wonder twice. P. Diddy, Stevie Stevie Wonder, Sting, you LL, name it. Diana yeah, Ross, yeah. right? Yeah, and and yeah. so, so I mean, we're talking creme de la creme, you know, once yeah. in a lifetime kind of names. So yeah. I'm saying, okay, the flow is not like it was back then. They tried to revive the jazz. And I'm wondering if, you know, don't just, just just start organic, you know, keep it small and, and, and build up again to something. Because I'm trying to figure out this whole talk of it not being sustainable. What's been your experience? Because I've not been to the revived Tobago jazz. I would have been part of it in the Clico days. I saw uh, Diana yeah. Ross and these folks back then, and I remember yeah. massive turnout. But then I used to wonder, even back then, did, even, did the jazz even make money? Because you know the bill for these top tier people is a different yeah. kind of bill. So, so walk us through this jazz experience in Tobago for those who are not aware. Right. So in its first three years, and you, you quite rightly say CL Financial, they were the financiers behind it. They were also the organizers. Now, the difference is that they were able to leverage their international contacts. They were able to leverage, you know, um, you know universal skills, which were necessary to put on a fantastic world-class event. Now, in those three years, the reputation and name of that Tobago Jazz Festival built up so quickly and so rapidly. You had people who, they would not come back to Trinidad for Christmas. They would not come back for Carnival. They would not come back for Easter. But you see, Tobago Jazz, they had to be there. So it really became a signature event throughout the Caribbean. And you had persons flying in from North America, from Canada, from Europe, just to come to Tobago Jazz. That's the three years that CL Financial had it. And as you say, I mean, it was headline acts for the entire weekend. You know, mm -hmm. every night it was packed with, you know, big, big, big names. So... The, um, at, after the three years, the CL Financial Group said, hey, listen, this is, you know, financially draining on us. And they said to the THA, look, you guys may have to take over this thing because we, we, we can't continue with it as is. Now, what ought to have happened at that point? Because the THA does not have the skill set. They do not have the you know, resources immediately available to say that they are running an international jazz festival. So therefore, what they ought to have done is say, hey, listen, OK, CL, let us partner with you. You already have the know-how. You have the international con contacts. Because Jason, as you know, I mean, these things, first of all, you have to plan it you know, months, years in advance, you have to have the contacts throughout the music industry internationally. You have to know the producers, you have to know the songwriters, you have to, to be able to get these artists to perform, to, you know, dedicate time from their schedule to come down, you know, and then of course, you know, some of them are very much divas. They, you know, they, they, they want all kinds of requests. And the point is sometimes you have to cater for these things. So it's, it's, a, it's a tricky, tricky business. And if it is that you don't have that know-how, then maybe the teacher you should have simply said, hey, listen, okay, let's make some financial input and you keep running the show to keep it at that standard. The problem was once you had that total handover, where THJ took it over totally, then, of course, the fumbling, bumbling, and stumbling began, and it only got worse. 
because you had persons who really did not have the knowledge and expertise. And I mean, to their credit, they tried the best with what they had, but they just were not up to that level to keep it to that international standard to be bringing these marquee headline acts all the time. And that is what really set the Tobago Jazz Festival apart from everything. Because, I mean, I've been to St. Lucia Jazz Festival, I've been to Dominica Creole Festival, I've been to, um, you know, other festivals throughout the Caribbean. And I could tell you, the Tobago Jazz Festival was the number one in those first three years in terms of the quality of the lineup. There's no way you could have gotten that kind of lineup. I mean, there are friends living abroad who say, wow, you know, for the price of that ticket, and you're getting to see all these people in one night. I yeah. mean, yeah. it was a no-brainer. May she, may she rest in peace. Whitney Houston graced that to be yeah. the jazz team. That's right. Let, That's me, right. Ask, let That's me ask right. you. Let me ask you though the impact on tourism because I know Tobago. There are certain weekends, so let's consider great race weekend. There's great Fet weekend. Uh, we got Easter. Uh, it's a big time for for folks that across the Tobago. These the Tobago Carnival in October. Uh, let's consider. Well, the jazz. Uh, out of the weekends just mentioned, was jazz the biggest in terms of the pull and what kind of impact? See, yes, yes. Okay. There, there was no comparison. I mean, listen, Jason, I'll, I'll tell you how bad it was. I had friends who would call me and say, boy, they don't know what is happening because the streets in Trinidad are empty. The highway is empty. And I told them it's because everybody's in Tobago. Everybody is in Tobago for those first three years. That, that, that's how that's how serious it was. You know, people, as I say, would fly in internationally okay. for this. So that was the first three years. Value. But in terms of the second wave, what went on in the second wave? Because it had jazz up to last year, if I'm not mistaken. Right. So the THA has been trying to manage it um, on its own, you know, since then. And as I say, sometimes there are things that if you really don't have the skill set then you hand it over to persons who really have that knowledge and expertise. And as I say, maybe you partner with them as yeah. they make a financial input. And they say, hey, listen, are you on this? You know, we would make a financial contribution, but you take it to the level that okay. you want it to be. Because let me tell you, a jazz festival is a big tourism draw. It is a, if it's managed properly, marketed properly, planned properly, right? And and that's something that the THA didn't seem to understand. You cannot come two months before and say, well, we advertise it to let people know we have an adjust festival, or two months before you don't even know who is coming, you know, or you have artists who took your money and you know, um, didn't sign the contract and, you know, all the kind of rubbish that has happened. Mm. These are things that you plan way in advance. You have it locked down. You have it advertised. You know, some, some, some of these festivals, they advertise more than a year in advance. They yeah. let people know. So that way, people who have to book vacation time, who have to apply for time off from their jobs could do that. Then, of course, you know, the reality, Jason, you know how it is. Yeah. People in North America, they, they, this is like a, a big thing for them. So they have to search for cheap tickets. So every night they're on their computer looking for the best price for the airfare. So, okay. you know, to be able to grab that, to be able to come down so, for an event like that. So, so it's not something that you could just announce today for tomorrow. So, Martin, in that regard, you're saying to me the numbers compared to the first installment, the first time or ground, that first wave, the first three years, in terms of the second wave, the one that we experienced last year, year before, and I guess prior to COVID, the numbers dwindle. So I'm, of course, of so, course, so, so of in course. that regard, dwindled, the quality dwindled, the participation dwindled, and the overall effect of it, you know, was much less, um, you know, enthusiastic than, you know, it was for those first three years. And it goes back to my original argument because, okay, the, argue, the, 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 the claim now is that it's not sustainable, but I'm wondering if they should have just pressed the reset button, start small and build it organically because, again, we jump out because the finances would have been running. CL was behind it. We wanted to compete with the likes of St. Lucia, as you would have mentioned, who had their jazz model way before us. But they also yes, took a time to build their brand up to what it is, and it continues to yes. be today. You know, mm -hmm. it was organic. So I'm saying to myself, let's reset, start small, and build it back up because... As I mentioned, I wonder if it as like we were chasing a shadow. We, we, we came out, we, it's, it's like you give this person, you give your audience such a high level that that is now the expectation. We can't go back, but sometimes you need to press reset. 
And I'm hoping if this jazz is to ever come back, that that will be the business model. You start small and keep it going. Do you think the jazz will ever return to Tobago, uh, Martin? I, I think it can, and I think it should, because um, it really was, you know, a, it, it, it generated so much interest, so much excitement, so much, you know, camaraderie. You would meet up people who you haven't seen in years. You what know, about the revenue? Enjoy, what, like, fantastic music, food, everything. What about know? the revenue, Martin? I guess it would have generated revenue for, for it, the local store. It would have generated revenue because the point is, you all your all your hotels, all your guest houses, all your taxis, all your limos, you know, everything was booked up. Everything, you know, all your food stalls, all your restaurants, everything. Your supermarkets would sell out. So therefore, it really was a big, big income generator. So therefore. I think that it's something that we ought not to let die, but it certainly needs the professional input of persons who are knowledgeable in the international entertainment scene, not just the local scene. You know, you can't tell me that, you know, okay, your experience is planning, you know, um, a best village competition, and therefore you now are going to take that and say you are going to plan an international jazz festival. But, you know, yeah. with the greatest of respect, it's two different things. Yeah, I guess I guess it is. I mean, one is one is a local uh, product, organic product, and, and as you rightfully said, your contacts, your network needs to be far-reaching in and terms if, of... if you don't have that, Jason, you know in this industry that that is it, that networking is what matters. Look at, for instance, Rihanna. Look, look at, look at, look at the brilliant strategy she pulled off there in India. Right. The whole purpose of it is because Sephora they have now partnered with Reliance, which is Ambani's um, flagship, you know, business in India. Right. So Sephora is opening hundreds of stores across India. Right. And Rihanna's makeup line. They are going to be selling it. Okay. So therefore, that dig she did for Ambani's son's wedding, yeah. you know, it was strategic of marketing course. and alliances being networked and yeah. leveraged there in front of the world. I know her product is in a market. Understanding her what is going on there. Her product is in a market with a billion people. So yeah. Uh, Thank you. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Numbers. Thank you. Numbers. You see? And those, those contacts are what you know you really need if you want to have an international jazz festival. Wow, Martin, I want to thank you for the commentary. I mean, it's, I just hope it doesn't go down the road of Suka Monarch because that's another heartbreaking one. We saw it didn't happen for one year, it didn't happen for a second year, and God alone knows what's going to happen next year. I guess yeah. central government now, that's another discussion as to if they should get involved, but... We'll put it on pause there for now because we know yes, fully yes, well. Yeah, that's an entirely different discussion. We know fully well how sometimes the powers that be uh, feel about about entertainment and 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 you know I guess some people do see it as sustainable, but we know differently. Martin, exactly, exactly. Thank you as yes. always. Thank you, and uh, we will well, talk to you soon. Pleasure. Have a great morning. <laughs> Same to you. Oh gosh, the big. I'm so sorry. Uh, no jazz this year. Uh, they say it's not sustainable. Let's see if things could work itself out for 2025.